Welcome to Victory Live, streaming from the campus of Victory Baptist Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. We're glad you've joined this week's worship broadcast live on our Facebook page and as well as our website. At the conclusion of the message today, we will give you more information on how to better connect with Victory Baptist. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Would you stand together as we celebrate the risen Savior this morning? Christ the Lord is risen today.
seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good. the windows fastened down I spent the night in sleeplessness rose at every sound half in hopeless sorrow half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away and just before the sunrise I heard something at the wall the gates began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. 
John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they'd moved him in the night and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't there. We both ran toward the garden then John ran on ahead. We found the stone and the empty tomb just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they'd wrapped him in was just an empty shell. How or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Well, something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle. I just turned to go, circumstance and speculation. Couldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucify him Then I saw him die Well, back inside the house again The guilt, the anguish came Everything I'd promised him Just added to my shame When at last it came to choices I denied I knew his name even if he was alive, he wouldn't be the same. Oh, but suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume. Oh, and light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. And Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide. And I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet, and as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release, and every fear I ever had just melted into peace for he's alive he's alive he's alive and I'm forgiven heaven's gates are open wide he's alive he's alive he's alive and I'm forgiven heaven's gates are open wide God's people said? Amen. Amen indeed. Please be seated and turn with me to John chapter 20, John's gospel chapter 20, and part of that uh, passage or this passage <clears throat> is a part of that song that we've just heard and uh, so grateful for Mike Hedrick as he is filling in while Jim is away. And uh, Mike, thank you very much for being here and sharing with us today. John chapter 20, and we'll begin at verse 1, and this is a passage that I think you will recognize as we come to this day when we celebrate the fact that he is risen. And he is risen indeed, is he not? And we come to celebrate that. So hear the word of the Lord today, beginning with verse 1 of chapter 20 of John's Gospel. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. She saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. She went running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said to them, 
They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then following him, Simon Peter also came. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple who had reached the tomb first then also went in and saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white standing where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they have taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was him. Woman, Jesus said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it you are seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if they've carried him away, tell me where they've put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary? Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what Jesus had said to her. Amazing story. <coughs> Excuse me. But it is a part of our journey, is it not? A part of our journey that reminds us of the fact that we have something very special that is God's gift to us. Bill, do you have that picture? I want you to see this this morning. I know it's a little difficult. This is the Sunday morning paper of the Cape Cod Times. Do you see what the lead story is? A home for Easter. That's Harbor Church. <clears throat> that cool cat sitting there is Josh Adams, the preacher. I'm glad he's at Cape Cod and not here. <clears throat> Can't match his wicked coolness. One of my friends posted last night, on Facebook, this question. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what color is a mirror? Do you know what color is a mirror? And then he simply said, something I've been reflecting on. <laughs> now, ladies, turn to the men next to you and tell them what that means. <laughs> All right? something I've been reflecting on. Well, I want us to reflect for a few minutes on this question that Jesus asked Mary. Who is it that you are seeking? Who is it that you are seeking? If we think about it for a moment, that really is the question of the ages. Who is it that we're seeking? It seems first and foremost, people are seeking themselves. The question that resonates with all of us is with the question that says, who am I? What is it that is my purpose? What is it that I'm here to do? What is it that I'm here to contribute to the world and to the society that I am a part of? I want to be me, but I want you to accept me for who I am, and I want you to help me be me even if you have to pay for it. We have a lot of things going on and a lot of thoughts about that in the world in which we live. 
people are saying to themselves and saying to us, I want to be remembered for something. I want to be known for being somebody. So I will follow the path based on the world's values, the values of this world. But the fact of the matter is that even if we do something extraordinary, after a while, the world will forget us. How many of you know the name Herschel Shakaraktar? You know that name, Herschel Shakaraktar? He was a rabbi. He served with Patton in the Third Army. And on the day that they moved into Bakkenwald, they went into the consecration camp there, and what they saw and what we've been known and what we have been made to see as reality was hundreds and hundreds of men stacked on bunks in barracks. And even though the American army had come in and had liberated them, none of them would come out of their barracks. Not until Rabbi Herschel Shacker went in and said to them, Peace unto you, Jews. You are free. About five years ago, at the age of 95, the rabbi passed away. There was not a lot of pomp and circumstances about his burial. Just a small piece in the paper that said, Rabbi had passed away in Bronx, New York. I don't know about you, but that's pretty spectacular that this guy went in and shared peace. Be to you, Jews, and only then would they come out of the barracks and acknowledge the fact that the soldiers that had come to liberate them were truly causing them to have a sense of freedom. For us to think that we can do something so extraordinary that the world will recognize and remember us forever really is a misguided thought. Uh, Our friend Ray Pritchard has noted that living by earthly values produces earthly rewards that pay off quickly but disappear just as quick. But living by the kingdom, God's kingdom's value, Values produces rewards, and they don't usually come as quick, but they do last forever. And then, (coughs) I'm sorry, excuse me. He continues by saying, by definition, this world forgets the past, lives in the the present, and dreams about the future. And all those things we do to give ourselves significance, the degrees after our names, the houses we buy, the money we save, the cars we drive, the empires we build, the relationships we seek, the clothes we wear, the networks we create, in the end, those things will amount to nothing. If you are living by this world's values, you are, of all people, to be pitied. May I suggest to us that while well-intentioned, to think that we can gain enough notoriety and people will like us enough that there will be some significance tied to our name and there will be some legacy that people will want to lift up and remember for a, a brief while. But the fact of the matter is, Richard is right when he says to us that we are all replaced. Our memories, our accomplishments, our records, they're all there to be broken by someone who will follow us. But I would say to us this morning, while these may be well-intentioned goals for us, I think they are misguided, but I would also suggest this morning that we're not alone in this dilemma because I think Mary Magdalene also was misguided. We read this passage and we ask ourselves, what is it that she was thinking? What was in her mind and what was in her heart as she made her way to the tomb to try and do for Jesus what At that moment, no one else seemed to want to do. And can I suggest to all of us this morning that while her intentions were good, her expectations were lacking the substance of her faith. Listen to what she says. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Now, 
I would suggest to all of us this morning that if Jesus is truly Lord, how in the world would we ever consider that he was lost? If he's Lord, then he's Lord over all things. Even death. And it's a little bit like my wife. She, she says, I've been telling you that over and over and you just weren't listening. And sometimes she's right. But Jesus had been telling his disciples over and over again, I must die. I must be punished at the hands of the leaders in Jerusalem. But on the third day, I will be raised from the dead. And so while well-intentioned in her efforts and the things that she was doing, her faith, her actions were lacking some substance of her faith. They've taken his body, and we don't know where. We don't know what they've done with him. So what is it that she was doing? First of all, let's note the fact that the tomb that Jesus was buried in was a borrowed tomb. It's so interesting that they understood that the burial was going to be a temporary thing, but they had no idea in their mind at the time they laid him there that there would be a resurrection They were simply thinking that he will stay there for a while and we'll take him back to Galilee and that's where we'll bury him. And here's Mary, she's coming to the tomb and according to John, she was by herself. And the fact of the matter is, as she departed from the place where they were staying and made her way to the tomb, she was not seeking a savior, she was seeking a dead man. She was looking for a body to prepare for burial. That's what she was doing. Well-intentioned, but certainly lacking the substance of her faith that Jesus is Lord. Mary was seeking a solace, her own solace, in preparing the body for a proper burial. And I think that maybe what she was doing was remembering all that she had seen because she was there when they crucified the Lord. She was there when he cried out, it is finished. She watched him die. She watched them wrap his body and put him in the tomb. She knew that he was dead. And so as she came, she was really seeking to memorialize his tomb, to prepare his body so that they could indeed take him back to Galilee and there bury him and have a place where they could go and visit and remember how he taught and how he was such a great teacher and how he ministered to people and how he made people feel so special and how he was able to touch lives and he could minister to them and he could bring healing to them and he could speak into the brokenness of their lives and bring them some peace and a sense of wholeness. We'll be able to go and we'll bring flowers to his tomb. That's what was in the back of her mind. Never thinking that there was going to be a resurrection. And can I suggest to all of us today that maybe that's what's going on in the lives of so many people as they think about Jesus. As I was in Cape Cod last week and I caught an Uber. Yeah, the old man takes an Uber. And I was talking with the driver, and we got to talking about Jesus. And he told me a little bit about his background and his religious background. And he said to me, you know, I've always thought that Jesus was special. I've always thought that he was a little higher than us. But I don't think all that stuff that that the people in churches talk about him is really true. And can I say that a lot of times, as as I'm having conversations with people about Jesus. What they're saying is, oh, I believe Jesus is a great teacher. I believe he was someone that really made a difference in his time. I think maybe he's making a difference even now. If we would follow his teachings, we might have a better world to live in. What we've done is we've memorialized Jesus. It's as if we know where the tomb is and we can go and we can place flowers there and we can remember him and say, you know, he was a good guy. 
He was a good teacher. That's a little bit the way I think a lot of people in our world today are remembering Jesus. And Mary was thinking, if we can just prepare his body, if we can get him back to Nazareth, we'll, we'll take him there, we'll, we'll find a good place for him, and we'll put him there, and we'll be able to visit him in a tomb. Well-intentioned, seriously well-intentioned, but certainly liking the substance of her own personal faith. She was seeking the missing body. She was concerned just as the Jewish leaders were concerned about a missing body. They certainly didn't want the people walking around telling everyone that this Jesus that talked about tearing down the temple and rebuilding it in three days, they didn't want pe these people walking around talking about the fact that this Jesus that was crucified is now alive because we can't find his body. Well, the difference is that Jesus was not going to allow there to be stories that were rumors. Jesus came to dispel all the rumors. That's why he came and walked among us, so that we would know that this is how God is. There's a lot of speculation about what God is like. Jesus tells us and shows us what God is like. And this is what he says to us as he gives us his model prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Listen to me. He is our Father. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to understand that the reason that Jesus came was so that he could reveal to you and to me, this is what I'm like. And he wants us to understand that as a result of his name being hallowed, his name being holy, his name representing righteousness, that without the ministry and without the gift and the sacrifice that Jesus made for us when he died on Friday there in Jerusalem, that's the good news. He died. You say, how is it good news that he suffered and died? It's good news because that was God's purpose and that was God's plan. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? And so Jesus died. That's the good news. But the best news ever is that on Sunday morning when Mary went to the tomb, there was no body there. And all she could think is someone has taken the body. What have they done? Just tell me where you've put him. Well-intentioned. But lacking the substance of her faith. Because we need to come to the place this morning where we recognize that while our efforts of leaving a legacy is well-intentioned, we need to understand that the greatest significance that any human being will ever have is coming to a place where they acknowledge the fact that God loved them so much that Jesus died on a cross for them, that God raised, them from, raised him from the dead so that they might be sealed to the promise of everlasting life, a life that is new here with new purpose, new significance, new understanding, new direction, a life that is abundant, that is full and meaningful, it has direction, and life that is absolutely eternal. It's the best news ever. And we need to come to a place where we realize that only in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ can your life and my life be transformed into the promise that God has made and sealed for us through Jesus Christ. Here's what Paul says. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, But God, but God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Listen, we need to recognize the fact that Christ is expressing his kindness to us because of his resurrection. And that kindness is through a sense of purpose and a sense of understanding that, hey, this life it's not all there is. We don't need to sing if that's all there is, then just forget it. We don't need to sing that verse. We need to recognize that what God has and what God has purposed for us 
is that we would embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and in so we would be raised to his kindness, and we would walk in his kindness, and as we walk in his kindness, we would display his glory. And our lives would display the fruit of the Spirit, the work of the Spirit in our lives, joy and faith and love and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. And we'd be the kind of people that others want to be around. Not because we're something special, but because someone special embraced us and saved us and set us on a new direction. Right? Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the purpose. And this question is absolutely the right question. Who are you seeking? Mary, who are you seeking? (laughs) And the interesting thing is Mary sought to follow the pathway of this world. She gave She wanted to give a dead man a proper burial. She wanted to memorialize his legacy. She wanted to honor his name. No, Mary, there is no body to prepare for burial. No, Mary, there is no legacy to memorialize. No, Mary, there is no name to honor, only a resurrected Savior to surrender to. A heritage of obedience bathed in love and grace to embrace a name that at the mention of that name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord and it is his voice calling Mary, Mary, the Lord is risen. And at the call of his name, of her name, no longer was he a gardener. And no longer was he just a teacher. Listen to what she says. The Lord is risen. And the same Lord they called Mary's name in the garden is calling your name. He's calling your name. And he's calling you to follow him. And the amazing thing is, and the great news is that this same resurrected Christ is willing to stand for you in the presence of his father because he is reversing that story that you've been living. Jesus reversed that big story that we were a part of as a result of Adam's sin. And Jesus provided for us an understanding that as he transformed Mary's life, his desire is to transform our life. And as he transported her life from death unto life as a result of God's great love that he has for us, he's longing to transport your life and to transform you from the dead to the living. Another gospel reports it this way. Why are you looking, searching for the living among the dead? (laughs) I wonder how many people look at us and when you talk about loving Jesus and we tell them we've been to Easter service where we declared and proclaimed for anyone that was willing to listen that Jesus is risen and yet we live as if he were dead. Because we live as if we have no hope. Mary's life and the only hope that she had before that moment when Jesus called her name was the hope that she could memorialize his tomb and people would come and remember that he was a good man. Jesus said, no, Mary, no, Mary. Who is it that you are seeking? Mary, you're not seeking a dead man. There is no dead man. Only a living Savior. Only a living Savior. And you see, while we may spend much of our lives seeking significance, here's the good news. The greatest significance that you will ever enjoy is knowing that the God that breathed life into you, 
sent his son to die for you. And God raised him on the third day for you so that you might be sealed to life everlasting. You want significance? Significance that lasts forever? Then surrender to Jesus. Amen. And you see what many people, what many of us, what we're struggling with is asking ourselves now the question, am I worthy? I'm not worthy of receiving that. Listen, I was reminded at a Good Friday service Friday night, it's not, that's the wrong question for you and me to ask. It's not about whether I'm worthy. It's about whether or not Jesus is worthy. Because here's what Paul says in the passage that we read from Ephesians chapter 2. He says, we've been seated with Christ. Christ took the seat before us, and only as a result of him being worthy are we able to stand before the seat of grace. And then in Revelation 5, and when you go home today, you'll have an opportunity to read that for just a little bit. And there's a scene there where the, the scroll with the names of those, the book of life. Is there anyone worthy to open it? And John the apostle saw and looked and all he saw was a lamb that had been slain. And he wondered if anyone was worthy. And all of a sudden, a great praise came up. Because it was not about John the Apostle being worthy to open the scroll because he wasn't. It was not about the preacher today being worthy of opening it because I'm not. It was the declaration that the lamb who had been slain, the Lord Jesus Christ, took up the scroll and broke the seal. And all of heaven broke into praise. And this is what they said. He is worthy. He is worthy is worthy and because he is worthy he's calling your name and he's asking you to come and to find rest for your soul as you embrace him who is it that you are seeking are you seeking a savior his name is Jesus. And today, today, he's calling your name. Will you come? It's not about you being worthy. It's about how he, how worthy he is. And with his extended arms and with his voice of invitation, he's calling you home. Will you come? Will you trust him? Your search is over. It's Jesus. And he is risen. Risen indeed. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful gift. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the fact that he sought us and he came to reveal you to us. And thank you that... He continues to extend an invitation for us to come. And Father, I pray that in the power of your Holy Spirit that you would call the name of someone here today that doesn't know you. Father, may they come and may they desire to embrace the life that only you can provide as they place their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Acknowledging that he died for their sin that separated them from you. That you raised him from the dead to seal him to them to the promise of the everlasting life. Father, I pray that you would give us courage to step out today to embrace that truth that truly we might be set free free indeed and it's in Jesus name I pray with every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment you're here today and maybe you're here for the very first time you had no idea you just came because someone invited you to come and I'm glad you've been here
I pray that God has touched you in some way. But if you're here this morning and you would say, Brother Chuck, I've never trusted Jesus Christ. I've never responded to his call for me to come to him. But the desire of my heart this morning is that I could go, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that I could respond to his calling. If you're here this morning and you have a desire to place your trust in Jesus without anyone looking around, just so that I might pray for you today, would you just simply raise your hand this morning and say, Brother Chuck, I, I want to know Jesus. Would you do that today? Thank you. <clears throat> anyone else? Anyone else? Heavenly Father, have your way as we surrender to you and as we acknowledge that you are the Lord of all things. We thank you for your love. May we respond to it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. And in the next couple of moments, we're extending an invitation to you. <clears throat> Maybe for you to step out and to say, yes, I want to know Jesus as Lord. Maybe today you're a follower of Christ and you would say, I want to come and unite with this church. We invite you to come. Maybe today you would come and say, Brother Chuck, would you pray for me? I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with this. Would you come as we sing together in the next couple of moments? You come, just I now. have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me. Cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning. Go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning. Would you be seated for just a moment? I want to introduce you to uh, Janice Lewis this morning. Miss Janice, would you come and stand with me? Uh, interesting, she said to me this morning as she came, she said, I accepted Jesus on Easter morning when I was 11. And I felt like as I've been praying for the Lord that it was appropriate for me to move and to join this church on Easter morning. So we celebrate that with her. What a wonderful acknowledgement of God's calling of her name and her responding to it as we celebrate here on Easter. And if you rejoice with me with Janice coming to unite with our church by transfer of letter, would you let her know with a hearty amen this morning? Amen. amen. We're glad to have you here. You. Welcome. So some of the folks will come by and greet you in person this morning. And uh, if you would, just stand here for a second, and we'll, we'll do that, okay? I will. I will have your sister come and stand with you. And that's Elaine Spence this morning. And so, Elaine, you come and stand with her as well this morning. All right. I want to remind you that there are the uh, selfie booths in the back. You want to have a picture of your uh, Easter uh, uh, clothes today, your garb today, so you'll want to have that. So, And there's one out in the lobby as well, so please do that. And it is good to have all of you here. And uh, our Bible study will begin in just a couple of moments. 
And then again, a reminder, there are no activities here tonight as a result of families being together. So we hope that you'll have that opportunity. But thank you for joining us today, a glorious day to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Let's stand together and we will be dismissed this morning. Heavenly Father, for the many blessings, we are grateful. Now, Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us in your purpose. And may we walk in the power of the risen Savior for all the world to see. And may his light shine brightly as we walk in his purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Victory Live. This is your personal invitation to visit us next week for worship on the Victory Baptist campus. To find weekly worship schedules, upcoming events, or to learn about better connecting with Victory Baptist, please visit vbcmtj.org. Our prayer is that the live broadcast of this week's worship gathering has helped you to grow in your walk with Christ. And again, Thanks for joining us today for Victory Live.